Hello everyone, Mr. John here from Airtune Institute. Today we are going to be talking about GCDs and LCMs in this week's Thursday Tidbit, along with a couple of different ways to manipulate them and work with them in some math problems. Let's start here with the review and the definition. Right? These things are pretty self-explanatory. The GCD of two numbers is the greatest common divisor, GCD, of the two numbers. Remember, the divisor is the same thing as a factor. So it's the largest factor that is in common of those two numbers. LCM is the least common multiple of those two numbers. So this is the smallest number that is a shared multiple of those two numbers. Doing a quick example here, if we take the two numbers 12 and 20 in this case, and we are looking for their GCD and their LCM, the GCD is the greatest common divisor, the greatest common factor of those two numbers. And these numbers are small, so you can just kind of look at the factors, right? 20 has factors of 1, 2, 4, 5, 10, and 20. The largest one in common with 12 is 4, right? So for the GCD, we have it is equal to 4 in this case. If we look at the LCM, right, this is the least common multiple of those numbers. Again, for small numbers, you can just kind of calculate this out. 20 is not a multiple of 12. 40 is not a multiple of 12. Wait, 60 is a multiple of 12. That's 12 times 5. And so then in this case, we have the LCM is going to be 60. So we can just kind of calculate this pretty straightforwardly for the small numbers in this case. Now, what happens if the numbers are not as small? These numbers aren't so bad, but I just want to use them for our example in this case. When we have larger numbers, you can rely on the prime factorizations when calculating the GCDs and the LCMs. So remember, we're breaking down a number into the product of primes in these cases. So 100, that number is 2 squared. That's 4 then times 25, which is 5 squared. You might like to think of 280 as 28 times 10, right? 28 is 4 times 7, 10 is 2 times 5. We have some 2s, we have a 5, we have a 7, right? The prime factorization is 2 cubed times 5 times 7, right? 8 times 35, if you like, is 280. Now, the nice thing about prime factorizations is that we can calculate GCDs and LCMs using those primes separately. So if we're talking about the greatest common divisor, what are the powers that they have in common? Well, both 100 and 280 have a 2 squared, right? Both of them have a 2 squared. So the GCD will definitely include a 2 squared in that case. And it, they also have a 5 in common, right? Both of them have a 5 in common when we're talking about the divisors or the factors, right? So we have a 2 squared and a 5. So our GCD in this case is going to be 20. Now for the LCM, we're going to come back to this in a second as well. We do the larger of the powers, right? We need to be a multiple of both. So it needs to be divisible by 4, but also by 8 but from that 2 cubed, right? So we have this 2 cubed. That needs to show up in the LCM. It needs to be divisible by 25. So we can say times 25, which I'm going to write as 5 squared here. And of course, we need to be divisible by that 7 as well. So this allows us to pretty quickly get the prime factorization. We still need to calculate this out, right? This is going to be 1400 if you calculate out the LCM in this case 
Yeah. GCD looking for kind of factors or powers of the prime factorization in common. And then the LCM, we're kind of taking the larger ones, right? We need all of the powers to show up somewhere in this LCM. Now, that's helpful, but what's a cool trick you can do and you can understand using these prime factorizations? A cool trick is that if you take two numbers, m and n, any numbers, positive integers, right? The product of their GCD and LCM is just the product of the two numbers themselves. So let's look at our example just to kind of explain what we mean by that there as well. Let's look at this same example we just did. So we can take here our GCD and our LCM of 100 and 280. So if we multiply those things out, so we have 20 times 1400, notice that that is going to be equal to 100 times 280. So this kind of is our idea and our trick that we can look at here. All right, so we have these things multiplied out in this case there. So the left side is our GCD times our LCM. So here we have GCD times our LCM, and this is equal to M times N, the product of our two numbers in that case there. Now, we're not going to do a full proof of this, but just looking at the idea of it there, right? If we start thinking about where our numbers came from, right? Let's think about our 20 and our 1400. Well, pretty clearly, that's multiplying out the GCD, right? So we have 2 squared times 5, and then that is multiplied by the LCM. Right, so that's going to be multiplied by the 2 cubed times 5 squared times 7. But notice here that the order of that multiplication doesn't matter. So let's rearrange those powers a little bit. Our 2 squared, well, that shows up here in the 100. Our 5 power, just 5 to the first power, shows up in the 280. So now I have highlighted both of those portions from the GCD. You probably can already see, but let me do the same thing for the LCM. The 2 cubed shows up here, the 5 squared shows up here, and the 7 shows up here. So in fact, we've highlighted the same numbers in both places, which tells us that the products have to be equal. This trick will actually work no matter what the numbers are. You're always using some portions of the prime factorization in the GCD and the other portions in the LCM. And that gives you this nice trick then where if you know the two numbers, right, you can multiply them together and that will give you the same result as multiplying the GCD and the LCM. That is good for today's video then. So check back each Thursday for a new math tidbit this year in 2021. And check out daily math practice and other resources at our Zimmel site, zimmel.airteam.org or the Zimmel mobile app. If you've been liking these videos, please subscribe below and I will see you guys next week. Goodbye.